You are now listening to the Venus Cuckoldress Podcast, a place to learn all things cuckolding for the curious, the passionate, and the sexually empowered woman who wants it all. Go to venuscuckoldress.com. You'll find the new Queen's Quarters fan destination. Book a one-to-one chat with me, listen to the private podcast, and even get access to my secret Snapchat group where I share some of my most intimate encounters. Now sit back, make yourself comfortable, and let's dive right into this episode. Welcome, everybody, to the show. I am so excited for this one. <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna love it. <laughs> it's definitely a fun one to put together. Uh, this was an idea that uh, one of my helpful cucks had came up with. He said, "This would be a great idea for a show if you do a trip down memory lane and talk about." All those times in the episodes that really turned you on. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I can do this. This sounds like so much fun because like I have definitely some memorable times over the years of podcasting. And uh, when I sat down to do this, I was like, oh, God, there's this is a long list. Like there's so many times that I just got wet (laughs) when I was talking about stuff. So this is going to be a little bit of a series because I can't put it all in one show. Today, I'm going to talk about the interracial Black Bull BBC moments that made me really wet and having a really good time on the show. (laughs) So... I make sure that you're not listening to this this episode in public space because it's probably going to make it a little bit awkward. <laughs> Definitely would be for me. <laughs> All right, before we get started in the show today, I just have a couple of announcements. First of all, okay, this is so fucking cool. Coming up on the next Pillow Talk event, it's going to be a little bit different than usual and... I'm going to have two fucking phenomenal guests with me. It's going to be the one and only Harmony California, queen of spades, content producer. Oh my God, she's just, and a friend of mine. She's just amazing. I love her to death and she's just fucking awesome. So she's going to be on the next Pillow Talk event as well as Doc Chocolate. He is host of the Bulls and Queens podcast and he's also a content producer as well and hot as fuck and funny as hell so it is going to be outrageous and so fun I already know this I already know this is guaranteed Uh, but it's going to be at a little bit of a different time than usual it's going to be during the day Uh, so it is Friday mark your calendar Friday May 19th and that is going to be at 12 p.m pacific time that's 3 p.m eastern and that's evening time for all of you guys out there in the UK that have been asking for an earlier pillow pillow talk time. This is for you. So it's going to be a lunch hour for me Pacific time on the 19th of May. Mark your calendars. Do not want to miss this one. It is free for everyone to catch it live. So if you want to watch and listen in, you can do that. You don't have to be part of the fan tier to be able to watch it live. However, If you do want to watch the recording, then you do need to be part of the Queen's Quarters fan tier. It is. There's like a gazillion other perks for for supporting the show. So that's just one of them. So if you want to register for that Pillow Talk event, it is going to be on the events page at venuscuckledress.com. And then also, I'm going to have a special guest with me to be announced on my live radio show on GTFO Radio. And that is going to be, mark your calendars for this, 
Tuesday, May 23rd at 12 p.m. Pacific Time, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. And as well, the details for that will be, and the link to listen in, will be on the events page at venuscuckoldress.com. Okay, last but not least, I have a teeny weeny little favor to ask everybody. If you love this show, and I really hope you do, could you please go to Apple Podcasts and rate and review it? Five stars would be awesome. I would be so appreciative. Okay, that's it for announcements. Are you ready to jump into this? Because, like, I'm so fucking excited. <laughs> Let's do this. Here we go. So this one is going to start out way back. This goes back to episode number six. So first year that I was podcasting. And I think this was the real, like the first episode that I dedicated towards interracial cuckolding. So I wanted to try to explain in my own words, in my own experiences, what it's been like for me with black guys versus with white guys and what the difference is. And so I was, I was (laughs) trying to, to go ahead and like have some examples and stuff like that. And, and, uh, It's fascinating because to this day, this episode is the number one most downloaded episode ever for the show. This episode has been downloaded over 55,000 times or listened to 55,000 times. I was like, holy shit. That's a lot. I when I was recording this, I had no idea. Anyway, okay. Here, here's the part where I'm t- I'm trying to explain what the difference is uh, between white guys and black guys. Here we go. Black American guys, especially, they have this underlying kind of energy. It's like a gravitational pull. They don't even have to look at you. You just like feel them. Literally, believe me when I say that. You just like feel them. <laughs> like his voice is so low and smooth and just like sexy as fuck. He's got this really kind of like firm confidence that's not like aggressive, it's not edgy, it's not abrasive, it's just it's just like the smooth confidence. And he doesn't ask for what he wants. He just goes ahead and takes it. No questions asked. And you just give it to him. <laughs> As a woman, you just like give it to him. There's this whole different kind of dance between like a white girl and a black guy than between a white girl and a white guy. It's just, it's just entirely different. And whether or not she realizes that she's acting differently, she does. And you can just literally watch it. <laughs> and the way that guys, black guys can dance. Oh my God, they can move so sexy. Um, <laughs> like, damn, <laughs> they know how to move. It, oh, it's just amazing. I will give you an example. Oh my God, this is so funny. There's this show, I don't remember the name of it, Um, this TV show. And it's where like the, this, I guess, there's, there's a couple and one of them wants to test the other person about whether or not they'll actually cheat. And so they, they, one of them decides to, you know, I guess write into this show and say that they're interested. And so they work with the producers to create this scenario where their significant other is, um, is tempted where they actually try to tempt them. Um, to cheat and see what happens. And it's all filmed. It's like really kind of sketchy as far as morally, it's kind of fucked up. But I watched a few episodes and one of them stood out to me because <laughs> what they do, this is what they do. They, 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 um, they, they'll like hire an actor to go and hit on the girl or the guy. And so they, you know, they, they've got somebody who's going to go and kind of like try to get them to, I guess, lower their guard and, and do and flirt, do something. So, um, <laughs> this, it was, this scenario was she was going out with her girlfriends. So her boyfriend was working with the producers to, to, um, they were going to get like this guy to go to the club and try to hit on her. And they hired like some white guy to go and hit on her. And 
So they're filming in the club and this guy's like trying to, <laughs> this white guy's trying to hit on her. Just like, <laughs> I guess the best way he knows how. And she was, she was just not going for it. <laughs> and then it was so funny because, um, <laughs> She ended up leaving the club with this black guy who they didn't even hire him. <laughs> he was just there and he started dancing with her and she was just like, I'm in. <laughs> and she left with him. <laughs> and, you know, it sucks for him because that was pretty devastating for him. But I just I thought like, damn, that just goes to show <laughs> if you want your girlfriend to cheat, <laughs> you got to hire a black guy. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I still laugh so much when I listen to that story because <laughs> it's just so funny. Oh my God. Um, ah, damn, that just cracks me up. I don't remember the name of the show or whatever, but it was just fucking hilarious. So that was just one part of that episode that apparently <laughs> just struck a nerve with a lot of people because... <laughs> Oh, it was it. it, Yeah, it was definitely a big episode. So episode number six, if you want to listen to it, the link will be in the show notes for today. Okay, the next one, this episode came out in April of 2021. So a while back. And this one is called Interracial Cuckolding, a sequel with Black Bull 100. Okay, he's sexy as fuck. Let me tell you. (laughs) I thoroughly enjoyed having him on the show. (laughs) And we had a lot of fun. But man, he gave some insight into what it's like to be this like black bull with presence. And so here we go. This is what he had to say that really got me going. You've been to a swingers club, yeah. I take it. Yeah. And it's kind of like you're standing around, you're having a drink, and you're kind of just having a conversation with the different people there. And more than once, um, a husband's come up to come up to me and said, As soon as you walked in, I saw my wife immediately put her eyes on you. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, okay, well, that's nice. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> Oh my god, that's so hot to think about. You have no idea. That's just like within within like a cuckolding perspective. That him coming up to you and saying that is just fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, and I'm glad that they did. I'm glad that they do it because I mean, it kind of takes everyone's guard down, takes everyone's barrier down, and you can just have a conversation and kind of see if we're a match for each other. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm glad they actually came up to me and said something to me. And I'm glad that I look approachable. Yeah. Oh, well, (laughs) I got to settle down over here. (laughs) It's just hot. Please don't. Don't. Stay hot. I like it. By the way, I was just before we started recording, I was looking at your Twitter page and I was just like, damn, you've got some good videos on there. (laughs) <laughs> ah, thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Maybe I should, maybe I should start OnlyFans one day. I think you probably should. Like it's it's really those those videos are really really good. I I enjoyed them a lot. Like okay, that one chick who's giving you like the epic two handed blowjob. Like your dick is so huge. She's just like wrapping both hands around it. First of all, she looks. Ah, she's one of my favorites. She's awesome. <laughs> She looks so much like me that as soon as I saw that video, I was like, oh, my God, I feel like that's my video. But then I looked and like, no, she's just like my secret twin somewhere. So (laughs) that (laughs) that interview was tough for me to get through because I was like squirming in my seat. I'm like, I had just watched those hot as fuck videos and I'm talking to this guy with a sexy ass fucking voice. And I was like, oh my God, I was just, you know, I was trying to keep it together. (laughs) It was not doing great. (laughs) Oh God, it was fun. It was fun. Thank you, Black Bull 100. (laughs) Okay, this next one features another really super hot and sexy Black Bull named Qo Geo. I did an episode with him in October of 2022, and the title was Qo Geo Dominant Bull and Creator of Incredibly Hot Cuckolding Videos. It was one of my helpful cucks who recommended him as a guest for the show, and it was 
awesome. All right, here is a little clip from that show that got me hot. I, mean, I always tell couples, I'm pretty much open to anything that doesn't involve direct male-on-male sexual contact. Uh, outside of that, like, it's pitch your fantasy. I'm open. Let's talk about it. Um, yeah. There's actually one specific fantasy I've always been very curious to find a couple that's in for. And this is more at the extreme end, but it's uh, going on the honeymoon with a couple and fucking the wife throughout the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, that, oh, I actually had a couple a couple months ago I was talking to, and they were like, we're, we're actually engaged, and that sounds phenomenal. It didn't work out for other reasons, but like that would just be such an amazing story. Just share and like people be like, Good God, that actually happened. Like, yeah, I've got video. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't know if you've heard about my ultimate cuckolding fantasy that I have, but it's the wedding night BBC gangbang um, that I'm determined. But on my list of uh, 17 ways to cuck your man, um, <laughs> that's on there actually is having your bull with you for honeymoon and anniversaries. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> Yeah, no, I'm still waiting for the right couple to do that one. Yeah, I'm very interested. That'd be awesome to do. It's hot as fuck. I love it. (laughs) Mm, I just think that is so fucking hot that some couple came up to him and wanted him to do, to come along on their honeymoon. Like, that is just, oh, to me, it's ultimate cuckold fantasy material. (laughs) I love it. Okay, next. We have another super sexy black bull, Mr. Doc Chocolate. And Doc Chocolate was on the show in May of 2022. This episode was titled The Overpowering Allure of BBC with Doc Chocolate. And yeah, it was hot and it was fun and it was such a great conversation. Here is my favorite part. So my personal opinion on why women uh, find black men sexually attractive is just uh, the contrast in skin tones and uh, just the masculinity that we can bring and the passion and just the smoothness and the fact that we have that confidence. We just come in and we are pleasers. So we love to please our woman that we're with. We love to uh, make sure that you're sexually pleased, you're physically pleased, emotionally pleased, and we're competitive at that as well. So when we're with a woman, at least from my perspective, I try to make sure that I'm winning the gold medal, you know, because I don't want silver or bronze. I want to have that gold medal. I want to be that guy that's standing at the podium with the Star Spangled Banner. I'm I apologize, you're Canadian, but I had a Star Spangled Banner playing in the background and I got my hand over my heart, seeing that American flag flying over me. You know, I want to just like make this the best experience that the woman has ever had. And it's not just from the physical standpoint, but it's also from the the environment. So I want to make sure that uh, the sound, the look, the lighting, the smells and the whole thing that's surrounding it is sensual. I want to make sure that the right music is playing and that you just totally have an experience. And that's actually one thing that kind of gets me off. Now, um, do all bulls or wannabe bulls act like that? No, you know, but I feel like a good percentage of black men that do call themselves bulls. I feel like they, they roll like that. They really do. Yeah. I feel like there's certain scents that will just like set me off and remind me of just an incredible experience that I've had with somebody. Coconut, coconut oil is oh, one of those yes. things. Yes. Every time I smell coconut oil, I'm like, oh, fuck me now. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Me too. I love coconut oil. Coconut oil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so guys, if you ever get a chance or the luck to meet up with Venus, Coconut oil. Coconut oil. It is so true. <laughs> mm, there's just something about that. Somebody should have some like room fragrance spray or candles of like BBC scented, <laughs> you know, coconut oil. What is, so, so, <laughs> hold on. Do you, okay, so do, do you like, when you smell coconut oil, are you like reminded of black men? Yeah. Oh, fuck really? yeah. Oh, oh seriously. 
percent, a hundred percent, yes. Oh shit! Okay, okay. Oh yeah, you guys got that shit going on. You're <laughs> fuck. Every time I go into the bathroom, there's like you go into some white guy's bathroom. There's like a bar of like Irish Spring soap <laughs> and like fucking Head and Shoulders fucking shampoo. Okay, two in one shampoo. Oh, okay, you go two into a you go into a black guy's bathroom. Oh my god, he's got like ten different body care. Moisturizer, body butter, like fuck all this shit. And it, it smells amazing. And- <laughs> hey, hey, she's right. She's right. Yeah, I know. I know. I laugh about this with my girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, she's right. Yeah, hey, hey, because like, yeah, you go into my bathroom. I got the baby oil. Um, oh, I yeah. got two things of baby oil. I got like the the Vaseline with. Uh, cocoa butter smell to it from my head. Uh-huh. I got the beard oil, the citrus, and then I got the beard cream, and yeah. I got the coconut. Uh, no, the cocoa butter lotion. Yep. And yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you got it. I even got this... conditioner for my beard. Oh fuck! And you guys smell amazing. It's like oh, it's so good. But yeah, somebody needs to make a fucking candle. <laughs> Let's do it together. Let's have a joint venture. Like we're both entrepreneurs, Venus. Let's do it. Yes, BBC said. <laughs> what does the Queen of Space smell like? Ideas, though. Come on. What does, what does the Queen of Space smell like? I feel like y'all smell like roses and shit and lavender. Uh, just you smell like lavender. You look like you smell like lavender. No, I smell like exceptional pussy. That's what <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh my god, I die laughing when I listen to that. But that was a, such a fun conversation with Doc Chocolate. He's sexy as fuck. He's fine as fuck. And he's funny as fuck. Oh, good times with Doc Chocolate. All right, the next clip I have is featuring my good friend, Anne, Cuckoldress Anne, and uh, she was in an episode alongside uh, Scarlett, and this was May of 2021, so going back a little while, and it was called Interracial Cuckolding, When She Gets Hooked on BBC, and this episode, it features two women who are queen of spades, who prefers, uh, sexually prefer black men. And they were saying, telling their story and why that is. And so it was super hot. It was super fun. Here's a little clip from Anne where she's describing what it's like for her. The first time, there's two different times. And I, um, years ago, through the swing lifestyle, a single black male reached out to us. And he was traveling for work. And it was more, I'd say we were more like hot wife, hot wife kind of couple then. I mean, we never, I hate labels, but it was a threesome situation. So I remember we met the guy at the hotel. And I write about this in one of my blogs. But he had, he was, you know, really good looking. And he had just onyx black skin. He was beautiful. Mm. And I was one of my first times with a black male. And I remember, I don't remember much about the sex. James was there. He was like taking some pictures and doing some different things. But what I remember are the pictures, the contrast of my white skin, because it was pretty fair. And his skin was just dynamic. And at the time, I didn't pr- appreciate what I had and what who I was with. And it was probably, gosh, 15 years ago or something. So it was quite a, way, quite a while ago. Mm-hmm. And then... So that kind of started and he got to get, he came to town one other time and we got together. And then I met another black man who reached out on the lifestyle site. He was like 25 and just kind of an old soul. And we are still good friends to this day. I mean, we haven't gotten together because of COVID, but he's black. And I just, there's something about the ones that I'm attracted to A, are smart and articulate and they have this sense of, bravado where they just kind of take charge yeah. of in bed and I just god I fucking love it <laughs> and and you know obviously I love big dicks not every one has the same size but how they use it is pretty incredible like how they use what they have 
But so since then, I've always looked for black men. But in the swing community that we started, it was hard to meet them and meet them. And I remember one time meeting someone and we ended up getting together and then there was another person. But then just over time, I was just solely black. And when like six years ago, when we were really identifying as cuckold, you know, cuckolding, it's like, you know what, I've got to just start meeting lots of guys. I went on some different sites and I was kind of having some trouble finding the right person. Then they were all white men who were kind of reaching out to me, but I did meet somebody who was Danish and he was really cool because obviously he was from a different country, but he's still white. (laughs) But I enjoyed his company so much. But, you know, after that, I only look for black men because there's something, I don't know if it's our chemistry, it's the makeup of our chemistry, but I'm so attracted to strong, fit black men. Mm. And I'm a tall woman. So having a man that's taller than me just makes me feel beautiful, feminine. Have I totally submitted? Not yet, but I may at some point. Like if I have, I've always been one to kind of control my orgasm. This is how I like it. This is what I want. But I'm getting more comfortable with just like letting go and letting them take over, you know? Oh, yes. I love what she had to say there because it was so... So revealing, so honest, and so genuine in in the way that she was explaining it. I just absolutely love and adore listening to women talk about why they have this sexual preference for black men. If you want to listen to that episode, the link is in the show notes for today. All right, there's two left, and I have saved the best for last. <laughs> This next one was actually a bonus episode that I put out for my Apple Podcast subscribers and uh, also for my Queen's Quarters fan tier members. This was uh, a special one for you guys and is a one of my porn reviews that I did uh, regarding interracial porn, <laughs> so, which has been an interesting series, let me tell you. <laughs> but this is one of the really, really good ones. Oh my God. Okay. I just like scrolled through the bottom a little bit of the whatever timeline. Damn. Fuck. Okay. Okay. 924. I just got a glimpse of what happens at the nine minute 24 second mark. (laughs) Oh my God. That is like, (laughs) wow. (laughs) Wow. You have to, (laughs) you have to see that. Holy shit. That is a really, really big dick. So she's like laying down and his big dick is just hanging down into her mouth. That is beautiful. I need to get a picture like that. That is seriously impressive. My God. Okay. And the lighting at 918, I think it is. 918. Oh, it's beautiful. This is another black.com lighting with him really dark and she's really light. It's just so impressive. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, okay. So I'm kind of fast forwarding here. Oh my God. Wow. So this is so impressive. (gasps) Yeah. Oh, it's good. All right. (laughs) I can totally see why interracial, BBC porn is so fucking big because like, how could you not watch this and just be like so fucking impressed? Okay, that's just that's just one of the videos that I reviewed. I've reviewed several of them and had many very intense moments. <laughs> I actually really enjoy doing those reviews. So if you have a favorite porn video that you would like me to review, make sure you send it my way. All right, this last one is epic. <laughs> it's probably, yeah, one of my all-time favorite little clips that I put together for this show. And the episode is called Ultimate Cuckolding Fantasies. And this came out in July of 2021. So going back a little while. And yeah, this was good. Here we go. 
I'm sure a lot of you have already heard about before because I don't shut up about it, but it is having my first BBC gangbang on my wedding night. This is something that I first heard about when I talked about it with my first cuck boyfriend. And from that point on, I was like, yes, that is that is what I want. Like there's no negotiating it. That is, it's going to be that. (laughs) So (laughs) I've thought about it for quite a while and I actually wrote a post about it on my blog. So I'm just going to read this post because it's a small little snapshot of what I imagined this night being, but it's so hot. It's so beautiful. All right, here we go. I want to get married on a beautiful white sand beach somewhere, overlooking crystal clear blue waters. I want five of my favorite black eyes, and they will get a special invitation to the event. They will watch us take our vows and maybe even slip into a few of the photos with the bride and groom. After the ceremony, they join us in our honeymoon suite, and that is when all the magic happens. I can picture myself on my knees, my ring sparkling on my finger, my hair perfectly styled, and my makeup is totally on point. My pretty white dress contrasts sharply with the smooth, beautiful black skin surrounding me. The photographer in the background will be making sure every incredible moment is expertly documented for me. I will look over at my husband and ask him to come over to me. I want a comparison photo. God, I love those photos. Then he goes to sit back in the corner to watch. My black bulls move forward towards me and they take me. They take what they want and they don't have to ask. My mascara runs down my cheeks. My blonde hair falls out of place. My dress eventually ends up in a big, messy pile on the floor. I take all of that big black cock like I'm made for it, because I am. I look over at my husband, watching me, loving it. I smile at him and I say, I love you, baby. I am in heaven and he is right there with me. Oh my God, I, I, I can't, <laughs> I cannot even listen to that without getting insanely turned on. I just get lost in, in a dream when I think about that scenario. When I listen to that, I just, oh, I'm lost. I tilt my head back, close my eyes, and I'm, I'm lost in that fantasy. It is epic. So that was my one of my absolute favorite, favorite moments in the podcast. Now, for a bonus episode that will be coming out shortly, I'm going to talk about the hottest, hottest moment I've had on the show. I cannot listen to this episode without melting like... It's impossible. I can't listen to it when I'm out in public. I can't I can't listen to it without just feeling like I'm burning up. Like it is so hot. So that is coming out shortly on a bonus episode. If you are a Apple Podcast subscriber, then you get to listen. If you are a member of the Queen's Quarters fan tier, then you get access to the private podcast and it'll be out on there. So if you don't support the show and you love the show, you really should support the show. I would be hugely appreciative because it's because of your support that I'm able to do this. So thank you to everyone. All right. That is going to be it for today's episode. Make sure you go to venuscuckoldress.com. That's where you can subscribe to the podcast, ask a question for the show, and even book a private chat with me. 
All right. I hope you enjoyed today's show. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. My handle is at cuckoldressb. We'll see you next time. 